Hello and welcome to the latest in Anova Systems webinars. Today's webinar is 30 tips in 30 minutes and my name is Alex Abrigliano. Now if we go to SolidWorks um, and have a look at what we'll be going through today. Okay, so we have the supercharger assembly here and we're going to be looking at recreating some of the geometry for the gear case. And also we're going to be looking at, at putting together the fan shaft assembly. Now hopefully you'll pick up some tips up along the way. Okay, so we'll open up the gear case uh, cover. And we're going to recreate the geometry that you see here. So I'm going to open up a new part and we'll begin sketching. I'll open up a sketch on the front plane. Now the first tip, hopefully all of you are aware of this already, is the S key. The S key will bring up a contextual menu uh, with your tools on, which is fully customizable. It's contextual in the sense that if you're in sketch mode, you'll get sketch tools. If you're outside of sketch mode in part mode, you'll get feature tools and so on for assemblies and uh, drawings. So from here, I'm going to select a circle and we'll just sketch a circle out like so. Another tip is to use mouse gestures. So again, it's a contextual sensitive menu which will allow you to select tools based on holding your right mouse button down. So from here, I'm going to select the line tool. We'll add some fillets to the sketch. Like so. And we'll add another dimension in for the diameter of the circle. And the distance between the arc center of one of the rads and the center of the main circle. Okay, we have a, a fully defined sketch and I'm going to force it to become overdefined by trying to add in a relationship between those two points that I've highlighted. The relationship will be a vertical and that of course overdefines it. Okay, now because the sketch is overdefined we have a conflict of information, or conflict of dimensions and relations. You can look at the sketch and try and figure out what's wrong with it and think, well, perhaps that doesn't need to be there so I can remove that, for instance. Um, but a nice way to solve sketches that are overdefined is to use something called the Sketch Expert. If I click where it says overdefined in the status toolbar, that will launch the Sketch Expert. If I then click Diagnose, I can cycle through possible solutions where the Sketch Expert removes some of the conflict in relations. So if I just cycle through the possible solutions there, uh, they're the different ways in which the sketch can solve. The nice thing about using this tool is you can see a preview of the uh, the, the sketch prior to re removing the relation. So I've cycled through to uh, the solution that I want. Just click on accept and I'm free to carry on working. The next thing we'll do here is use our trim tool. So the power trim tool allows us to trim entities in a sketch. Now, if you want to undo any part of the trim, just hover over the dot that appears and you can just undo it back to its previous state, like so. We may want to add a dimension at the top, uh, just for reference at the sort of sharps of where these radiuses would be. So if I select the two lines which would intersect and then select the point tool you can see that I can add those sharps. And we may use that just to place down a reference dimension. Okay now I'm gonna force this sketch to have a problem I'm just gonna sketch in a stray line now this may happen from time to time with yourselves. Um, you'll add a stray line, and sometimes it will be very small, and you you won't really be able to see um, see it. 
and you can't figure out what's wrong with your sketch. Well, we have some tools to analyze these features. The tool in question here is called Check Sketch for Feature, and it's nested underneath all of these toolbars. Now, my next tip is to use the command search. If we just tap S once, you'll notice it brings up the S key toolbar. Um, and because the Check Sketch tool is something that I rarely use, I don't have it customized so it appears on there. What you'll also notice in the top right hand corner of the screen, it's actually made the command search active. So if you start to type the name of the tool that you're looking for, you could actually launch it directly from there. So, this sketch is going to be used for a base extrude. And if I go and check it, it tells me that there's a problem with the sketch and gives me the option to try and fix the sketch by clicking OK. The magnifying glass that pops up will just show you where the problem area is. And we can see that's the problem area. We'll delete that line out. Refresh the repair sketch dialog and we can see no problems are found. Now let's go ahead and extrude that sketch. Okay, so we have our solid. We're now going to go ahead and, and shell this. So, um, we're going to have this face removed from the shell. We're going to have all the side faces at 10mm and the back face at 12mm. So we'll go into the multi-thickness settings. I'll just spin that around and set that face to 12 we'll just go ahead and add a fi some fillets to this so we're going to the fillet tool and in the fillet tool we have two tabs at the top manual and fillet expert most of you will probably be aware of the manual uh, tab here uh, where we can do constant radius fillets face fillets etc you may not have used the fillet expert tool all this tool does is basically allows basically make selection of edges uh, much easier if I click on one of the edges you'll notice this fly out menu comes along and that will just prompt me or enable me to select multiple edges and SolidWorks is predicting what edges I want to select at this stage so just from the preview choose the one that's closest to what you want and then we'll just apply those fillets you'll notice that the property manager stays open and let's say I want to change one of those fillets now I can select an edge or group of edges and just resize that or remove it. So we'll resize it to 10 mil. Okay, so that's looking good. The next tip we're going to look at is a new option within 2012. And we'll just browse to that option now. Okay, so it's nested under System Options and then Sketch. And it's the very first tick box. Auto Rotate View Normal to Sketch Plane on Sketch Creation. So what that will do is when we open up a sketch on a face, it will automatically orientate the sketch plane normal to the screen. Just saves that extra step that you normally go through of clicking normal too. We'll add a circle, constraint to the origin, and we'll dimension that to 28. Now notice when I come out of the sketch, it orientates back to its no uh, previous orientation we'll take that sketch and we'll just extrude it through all like so we'll spin the part around so we can see the back face and open up a sketch on that again it orientates normal too and we'll start off our circle tool okay my next tip is when you're sketching a line or a circle if you hold the shift key you'll snap to various increments now that tool becomes quite powerful when you pair it with add dimension what that will do is as I place the dimension down it will automatically add a dimension of 50 mil so as we exit the sketch and extrude cut we have that feature completed very quickly we'll do another one similar on this back face and this time rather than snap into increments using the shift key we'll actually type in a value prior to placing that circle down so we'll make this one 70 mil just press enter and there's our fully defined sketch again we're going to just cut into this 2 mil deep 
Inside the front face, we'll just take that edge, convert the entities of the edge, and then extrude that as a thin feature, like so. Okay, now one of the great things with SolidWorks is the ability to reuse um, data. So in this instance, uh, what I want to do is generate a whole pattern that sits on this face here. Now this whole pattern may be something that is common between lots of my parts, uh, and therefore rather than drawing it out every time, what I've done is saved it as a library feature. So if I go to my library, you'll see I have a circular pattern there, which I can just simply drag on to a face, and just by applying a couple of references, place all my holes down. Very quick, very easy. That's added, actually added in three features for me. Okay, now just for your reference, um, on our website, www.anova-systems.co.uk, uh, we have a, a video snippet of how you can create a library feature. Another way of reusing data is to copy um, features from one part to another. So I'll just go ahead now and I'll tile my windows vertically so I can see uh, both my parts. What I'm going to do is just copy one cutout from my finished part to my unfinished part. So we'll just simply drag and drop that across video, um, across the windows, and release it on a face. Now the sketch itself needs to be moved. It will just uh, place the sketch where you release it. So we'll just grab hold of that sketch, and we'll use the Move Entities tool to just position that correctly. Now have, had I more time I'd go ahead and fully define that sketch. Okay we'll close this window down now and the last thing we'll look at before we move on to drawings is the evaluate toolbar. So this is a very nice area um, I encourage you to have a look at the tools on here um, whether you're a product designer or you do injection molded parts or um, are an engineer. Um, the tool that I'm going to use um, is statistics and all that will do is it will tell me how long it takes my part to rebuild, what are the, the heaviest features in the part, what takes the most time. So that can be quite useful because if a part is taking a long time to rebuild you can pinpoint it to one feature or maybe several and you can use it as a benchmark to compare your machines to other machines. Now we'll go ahead and uh, make a drawing from this part so we'll go ahead and save it away. I'll just call it case and I'll stick it on my desktop. Okay, so we'll drag in a front view and we'll project a couple of views off it like so. Now within the uh, the drawing area it is possible to import all your model dimensions through. Um, now let's say we don't want all the model dimensions, we just want some. If you drill down into the drawing view so you can access the part features, pre-select the feature that you want to bring the dimensions through from, you can just go to model items and bring the dimensions through just from that feature. So you can see that's all we get, we don't get anything else. Now we can take um, a dimension here and we can manipulate it so we can add things like tolerances, um, we can add text to uh, the dimension, we can have dual dimensions, we can add characters, that sort of thing. Now let's say we've changed all of this, um, so we've added the tolerance for example, and maybe some other stuff. Let's say we use that um, sort of format of dimension commonly, uh, we can save that away as a style. So the way you would do that is you'd make your changes, you'd select add a style, give it a name, and then you'd save that style away. Then if you wanted to use it again, you could just simply load it up. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. If I click on load style, I have a style saved away. And you can see that as soon as I load in that style, 
it just subscribes that dimension to that style. So if I wanted to do the same with this one, you can see I can just add it in like so. Okay, now we'll go ahead and we'll save this drawing away. And we'll close it down. Okay, now the first thing that I'm going to look at here is uh, my isometric view. In the drawing sheet, I don't want my isometric view to be in that orientation. I want it to look as if it's sitting on this face here. So to do that, we'll just orientate the model around using the arrow keys, like so. And then we'll tap the space bar and create a new view. And I'm going to call this Alt ISO. The other thing I'm going to do before I switch back to the drawing is just change that 42 dimension to, let's say, 50. All right, so let's open up the drawing again. Okay, now, um, something I wanted to draw your attention to is that the dimension that I've changed is now highlighted in orange. This is, this is thanks to a new setting that I've got turned on in my options. You'll find it under System Options and then Colors. And it's the very last tick box in this page. Use specified color for change drawing dimension on Open. So anything that has changed since the last time this drawing was opened will highlight in a new color. And it will tell you what the previous dimension was. So you can see there that's that's really useful, um, particularly when you have when you change one feature and it has a, an effect on lots of other features. Okay, now with regard to the ISO view, if I go to my view palette and just refresh it, you can see that now appears, and we can just drag and drop that in like so. Okay, we'll close this down. and we'll move on to the assembly. Okay, so first off within this assembly we have a, a series of bolts that are scattered through the assembly tree. Now I just want to reorganize those bolts so it, the tree looks a little bit neater. You can do this using something called folders. If I right click on that bolt, I can just select add to new folder, give the folder a name, and you can see from there that folder is now housed in that bolt. You can drag and drop other bolts into this uh, and you can multi-select them to drag them in as well. Now you can imagine if you've got a big complex assembly tree that can take a lot of time. So this is an ideal moment to show you uh, some of the select tools. So if we drill down into the select uh, drop down menu here this will allow us to select components based on a certain criteria. Some are already preset and you can, if you want, create your own. Like so. So from one of the preset ones, I'm going to use Select Toolbox. That selects all the toolbox parts and then I'm free to just drag and drop those in that fasteners folder and we can put that fasteners folder at the bottom of the tree. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is this screw here. So we have this screw and we need to populate all the other um, instances of this hole with this screw. To do this, the best way is to use a feature-driven component pattern. So if I go to the assembly tab and then hit the drop down here, we have feature-driven component pattern. I'm patterning the screw and my driver fe driving feature is that hole pattern and you can see immediately it populates all of those holes with that screw. Now that's quite a powerful tool because if you change the amount of instances in the pattern or you remove an instance, the pattern will update accordingly. The other thing we'll look at here is um, creating some display state. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this component and set it to transparent. Okay, now, it's possible to isolate various components in the screen, so you're just viewing those. 
Now, what I want to do is select this case in here and the transparent case in as well, but you'll see that every time I try to select it, I'm actually selecting through it based on the fact that it's transparent. If you do have transparent parts and you need to select them or select the faces of them, as you hover over them, just hold the shift key and then click and you'll find that you can select them. So with those components selected, I'll right click, I'll go to isolate and you can see that it hides all but those components that were selected. Now if I want to return to this uh, view state at any particular time, we can just save that as a display state, give it a name. And like I say, we can return to that at any stage. Also here, I might, in this display state, want that casing to be non-transparent. So we now have two different variations of that. Okay, we'll move on to the fan shaft assembly now. Which currently just has a shaft in there. First thing I'm going to bring in here is the end cap. So if we go ahead and just insert a component. It's not a bad idea to um, reorientate your components when mating them so they're roughly in the right orientation. I've just done that by holding the right mouse button down and dragging that face. I'm going to use smart mates to uh, speed up the mating process. So to use smart mates, you drag a face, you tap the Alt key, the part goes transparent. You then hover over what you want to make that face, what you want to make that face to. When you release it, uh, you'll be given the choice to just confirm the mate. So I've added a concentric there. We'll do the same with the planar faces. So let's zoom in on this area here. Hold the Alt key, drag, and just make those faces coincident. To speed up the mating process even further, you can add something called mate references. Now if I just go ahead and open an impeller, whenever I use this in an assembly, I want to make that face concentric and the top face coincident. Now if I go ahead and add a mate reference, and just pick the common edge between a concentric and coincident mate, press OK, when I go to add this to my assembly, If I want to add multiple instances of this component, I can just toggle on this Keep Visible and you'll see very quickly I can add multiple instances of this component. Another way to add uh, instances of components quickly is to use the Copy with Mates tool. Just simply right click, select Copy with Mates. That will give you the option to copy an instance of the component and you can either repeat the mates that's constrained at the moment or change their references. So in this instance, I want to repeat the concentric mate, but I want to change the coincident mate so it butts up against this face here. And there we have it. We also have some nuts that we want to add to this, so I'll just browse to those. I've already placed a mate reference on those, so you should find that they snap into place. And if we want to add another instance of this, uh, another way to add instances is to just control drag the component from the tree or from the graphics area. And you can see the mate references will be maintained as well. Okay, now let's say we've forgotten to add the material uh, to some of the components. We no longer have to open up the component and add the material at that level. We can just simply right click on a component um, go down to material and just add the material directly from there. Okay, the last thing that we're going to look at here is um, again from the evaluate tool, some of the tools available to us. So we have things like interference detection, clearance verification, do the holes align, that sort of thing. Um, we also have a tool called assembly expert now that's quite useful because it will tell you how many parts are in your assembly, how many sub-assemblies there are, um, how many makes are solved, 
that sort of thing and it also gives you some other information so for instance here I have a warning one of five documents in this assembly have not been updated to the latest version of SolidWorks until they are converted this will affect file open performance if we want to know what components they are we can click on show these parts and it will highlight them from the graphics area there and if you can't really see them or you want to make sure you're seeing all of them you can isolate everything else um, so you can isolate those components and hide everything else to make them easy to spot. Okay, so that brings us uh, to the end of the webinar. I've just uh, put up a summary board here so you can see all the tips. Okay, um, we have some questions. So the first question is, is it possible to customize the mouse gestures menu? Uh, the answer is yes. If I go back to SolidWorks and we go to Tools and Customize, we have an area here called mouse gestures. Okay, so mouse gestures as I said before is contextual so you have different commands in the different states you're in so if we sort by part you can see that we have orientation commands here if we want to change that we can just come in here and select a command like so we can also change the amount of gestures you have so rather than having four you can have eight and you can see that you'll get gestures as you as you go diagonally Okay, the next um, question is, can you sort the tree alphabetically? Um, the only way that I'm aware of that you can sort the tree is, alphabetically is to manually reorder it like so. Um, I don't think there is a sort command button that, that will do that for you. Can you add custom properties to parts at assembly level? Again, this is a, a no. The only way I'm aware of that you can add custom properties is to go back to the, the file itself and add the properties there. Okay, and the last one, how did you create uh, the display at the beginning where some of the components were wireframe and some uh, were, were shaded? Okay, this is done using display state. So you'll find the display states menu underneath the configuration manager here. And I already have some in there. Uh, I'll go ahead and create another one. So in this display state, I want to show all those impellers as um, inlines are removed. So we'll call this display state impeller HLR. and we'll expand what we call the display pane here so this is basically what you can control with display states uh, part visibility part display style appearance and transparency so in this case I want to set all the impellers to hidden lines removed so we'll just go ahead and select them all like so and just change that to hidden lines removed okay that change will be unique to this display state only so if we toggle between the display states you can see they go back to normal okay um, that brings us to the end of the webinar thank you for watching